how did electronic cigarettes become the biggest thing on the streets? Well, their rise to the top started a lot like regular cigarettes. There's no question that the e-cigarette industry has ripped its tactics straight from Big Tobacco's playbook. Take a look at the glamorous woman in the blue dress smoking a cigarette in 1930. And this woman today in an ad for an e-cigarette. The rugged cowboy then and now. Both marketed relaxation, sharing, travel, freedom, and sex appeal. E-cigarette manufacturers like candy pens can be promoted in DJ Khaled music videos, just like tobacco corporations used to pay stars to smoke their cigarettes on screen. Okay, that's just irresponsible. Celebrities shouldn't be advertising addictive substances to their fans, which is why the only product I endorse is cabbage. <laughs> cabbage, it's the one thing you definitely won't get addicted to. Mmm. Mmm. I don't want any more of this now. <laughs> now, to be clear, vaping companies aren't bad guys because they advertise their product. What made this a sinister industry is who they were advertising their products to. The FDA slamming popular e-cigarette maker Juul for marketing directly to students. Juul spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund youth programming. Two teenagers testified that a Juul representative came to their school to give an anti-vaping presentation. And when their teacher left the room, they say the representative repeatedly claimed that Juul was safe to use. 80% of teens who vape say they picked the product because it comes in flavors that they like. The teens say the sleek devices are easy to hide. You can't tell if it's a teenager's lip gloss or cologne or if it's a vape. Uh, I think you can tell because they're <laughs> sucking on it. I'm pretty sure teenagers aren't taking drags of eternity for men. <laughs> Something tells me that kids get away with a lot at this principal school. It's just like, boy, it sure is remarkable how many students here are texting about their eggplants getting rained on. <laughs> These kids love gardening. But when you look at everything from vape pen designs to their outreach, you don't have to be a genius to realize they wanted their products in the hands of teens. And the flavors are probably the biggest red flag of all. I mean, mango, cotton candy, jelly donut. Like, these things are so targeted at kids, I'm shocked that they didn't have, like, a breast milk flavor. <laughs> but according to the vape lobby, all these flavors are clearly for adults only. The industry is not targeting children. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you don't like uh, gummy bears. I see adults buying, you know, packs of gummy bears all the time. I mean, just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you don't like good flavors. Okay, okay. I hear you, rodeo accountant. I hear you. <laughs> but you have to admit, the vaping lobby's excuses sound a lot like a pedophile's excuses. <laughs> what, no? The candy and Disney movies I keep in my car are for me. Adults like Moana, too. <laughs> now, in response to all this criticism, the biggest e-cigarette company, Juul, has recently curbed their marketing to kids, and also they've gotten rid of all their super fruity, fantastic, totally adult flavors. But unfortunately, it might be a little too little too late, because countless teens are already addicted to vaping, and schools across the country are struggling with the outbreak. It's a nationwide problem. In Texas, some schools make kids roll up their long sleeves so they can't hide the devices. In February, Nebraska, they are randomly testing students in extracurricular activities for nicotine. There are vape sensors in Illinois and New Jersey bathrooms. One Alabama high school taking extreme measures after a student was found passed out in the bathroom after vaping. The principal removing doors off stalls in the boys' bathroom, which some parents say is excessive. Okay, hold up. Some parents say that's excessive? <laughs> Some parents think it's excessive to force kids to shit in front of everybody? <laughs> Who are the other parents? <laughs> Who are the other parents who are like, it's fine, my kid doesn't deserve privacy? I mean, aside from T.I., who are the other parents? <laughs> yeah, he's probably like, take the doors off those stalls expeditiously. <laughs> Look, I think we can all agree that neither kids nor schools should be responsible for fixing this addiction crisis that companies like Juul have helped create. If anything, e-cigarette companies should be forced to pay for the damage that they've purposefully caused. It's the same way opioid companies are being forced to pay for the work they've done that, that caused people to be addicted, or how Nabisco had to pay for Cookie Monster's rehab, you know? <laughs> and you know what, just to give them a little extra incentive, we should go to Juul's offices and take the doors off of their bathroom stalls until they fix the shit that they've done. So, in a nutshell... In a nutshell... That's how vaping became the crisis that it is in America today. And if you don't know, 
Now you know.